I'm 90% sure that I decided to be a writer like in sixth grade. Like I remember you used to write stories and then you would read them to the class. And I don't know, it went over well. I told my mom I wanted to be a writer. Based on that, we came to like a parents' night and she was, she started to say something to the teacher about, you know, he had a really good experience with the, the thing. And she was like, oh, he should absolutely be a writer. I was like, well, there we go. I wanted to be a writer right up until I like saw a movie and then I wanted to be a writer director. So I went to film school and a film degree, it turns out you, you don't really walk out and cash it in for a job writing and directing. So uh, it was like 10-ish years of construction. I was like a computer support uh, technician. D just did not seem like it was, uh, it was gonna happen. I was writing short stories. Some of those had gotten published. One of them won an award. So I decided that I was gonna write a novel and it was about a super depressed individual who outsources his entire personality to a beaver puppet on his left hand. Which, when you're like, this is my swing, like it's either this or uh, I'm just gonna get a regular job. That doesn't sound like the most promising uh, road to go down. And then my wife got pregnant with twins. So she also started to feel like, if in nine months we're gonna have two other people living with us, we should talk about like a timeline on this whole writing thing. So I tried to finish the book while she was pregnant. With about three months to go, I could see that I was never gonna get through a book. So I remembered that screenplays are only like 110 pages long. So I switched over, you know, I, I finished it like a week before my twins were born. It sold a week after. I always sort of credit them with like giving me the kick to like actually finish something and get going. That got made, that ended up being a uh, Jodie Foster, Mel Gibson movie. It went to Cannes. After 10 years of like not being able to get anything going, it felt like literally everything happened at once. And then I, I literally think because I was from Texas, I got asked to work on a show about oil because I must know something about it, I guess. Uh, that became a, a show called Lone Star. The first of a series of shows I was lucky enough to get on the air and unlucky enough to have canceled after a, a single season. Once you have kids, then you think about, you know, four months doing something somewhere is a four months that you're not with your kids. You don't get that time back. So that's more the lens that I put on things now than anything. If not, will this take me away from the family? Will they at least enjoy talking with me about it? Like, will this story interest them? Like, can I somehow involve them? For more than like a decade, I've been walking around with this idea uh, that I think literally came to me in a, a dream. Like I woke up and wrote it down and it was, you know, astronauts in space realizing that the earth had just sort of blinked off and what would you do and how would you explain it and what would happen if they went down to, to try to investigate. I'd been working on that idea for a long time and then I got like super sucked into the uh, the world of crypto and I would pick up my phone and my kids would joke that like I was going into my crypto cave. I hadn't met um, or interacted with a more like rabid, tuned in. Everyone else was in their crypto caves. So the idea that you could bring that sort of energy, that sort of commitment, dedication, enthusiasm, to a narrative became super exciting to me. And the idea that some of these different ways of collaborating and getting people to associate and vote and all of these like new mechanisms seem to open up. So once I started uh, thinking about those mechanics married to this story, it just sort of unfolded together. There was a way to not only build on that story, but to bring an audience into both sides of it. How could they experience the story along with the characters? How could they literally be part of the journey? And then how could they contribute to the story? How could they make it their own and choose where it went? Those just aren't parts of the film and television that I work in, that that's just not, um, that's not how you approach the audience. So it's sort of exciting to think about flipping that, literally going on the journey with the audience. It's almost like you give a prompt to anybody who wants to hear it and you only realize how they hear it when they bring something back. But it reignites my enthusiasm for like 
what we've already got planned, you instantly see ways to integrate these new thoughts and ideas. But at the same time, you don't know what some of the ingredients you're cooking with are going to be. If nothing else, that keeps it super exciting.